Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Lavinto Blender. In this video tutorial I want to show you how to use the constraints to make your job easier if you want to animate something. Ok, for that I have in here some gears that I'm gonna constrain. So first if you're wondering how I model these gears, uh, well I haven't. There's a really cool add-on which is right in here, add-ons, add mesh, add mesh extra objects. You just enable that and you can add some extra objects in here. Uh, and you have gear in here. And some other really cool objects, as you can see. Okay, so that's how I set up the scene in here and I'm gonna constrain them. Currently, if you take a look, there are no constraints. Every object moves freely as it wants. Okay, but I want to animate this or I want to add constraints that when I move this uh, on this axis every gear will move along with it, will rotate without me manually doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this gear in here. So go to the object constraint panel and you have some couple constraints in here. First I wanna show you the transformation constraint which is a very cool one and I'm gonna use it for all of my objects except this one as well uh, except this one sorry and second I wanna show you the copy rotation which is a pretty simple one and a very cool one as well okay so the transformation uh, constraint well basically with this constraint you can take the location rotation or scale of one object and translate it into location, rotation or scale of another object which is the object with the constraint applied. Okay, so first I'll select the target which is gear.001 this one and I want to take its location and translate it into rotation. Okay, so let's take a look at the axis. When I move this along Y I want this to rotate along Z, so I'm gonna switch the mapping in here. Put Y to Z. So the left one is the mapping of this object or the target and the right one is the mapping of the destination object, the one with the constraint applied. Okay, so I'm gonna put Z in there. That doesn't matter, we only need Y to Z. Alright, so world to world space, that's okay. Now when this moves one unit along Y, so put one in there on the Y, this should rotate 55 degrees, I found that out that it works along Z. Okay, so everything looks fine, world to world space, let's check it. And yes, it works, but as you can see it only works for one unit then it stops it doesn't rotate anymore and it doesn't rotate in the other direction only in one direction so to fix that you just have to check extrapolate which makes a continuous graphic uh, in here on blender wiki you have some explanation of what extrapolate do this is the graphic with the extrapolate disabled. This one, as you can see, those are the values. And the other one is with the extrapolate enabled. As you can see, it's a linear graphic. Okay, so I've checked extrapolate and now it keeps rotating because the graphic is linear, it doesn't stop after one unit. Okay, that first gear is done, let's go to the second one. This is a very simple one, the target is this object, gear.002. I will copy the rotation, the mapping is correct, and just check in here one, and in here one. So now when this moves one degree along uh, the X, this will move one degree along X. 
also check extrapolate to con so it would continue doing that but as you can see the direction is not correct this is the opposite direction that we want the direction of the rotate so simply you can just put in here negative one and you want this value in here to be opposite to this one so if you have in here minus one you need in here one or vice, vice versa okay now everything is all right good now if you see our widget uh, it doesn't have the same axis in here that because we selected local orientation and not global so it shows the local axis of the object and this widget that you can see okay I'm gonna add another transformation constraint and the target will be this one gear.003 I want to copy the rotation of it check extrapolate from now as well but this time I'm not gonna use both world space but the target will be world space and the owner will be local space so I'm gonna just insert one and one so when this uh, gear in here rotates one degree on the world Z axis this will rotate one degree along the local X axis which as you can see is this blue axis okay so that should work okay as you can see the opposite direction as well negative one and now it works okay, so that's basically how it works you don't need to change the mapping if the rotation uh, will be the same or I'm not sure if I explained it correctly okay now I'm gonna use another transformation for the last of my gears the target will be this object gear.004 as well I'm gonna copy the rotation and the mapping will be the same but this time I'm gonna use local and world space so pressing here one and one extrapolate and the local space of this object as you can see that's the z-axis so when this object moves along the local z-axis this will move along the global z-axis which is that direction and we can type in negative one from now because we already know that we need negative not positive okay in fact <laughs> we need positive on this one yeah sorry yeah this one works with the positive one and everything is all right but there's just one more thing to fix in here if you see when we move this to here everything is fine but we if we move it more it keeps rotating them but logically that shouldn't rotate so I'm gonna limit this object to only move till about here and about here okay so for that I'm gonna add a limit location okay so I wanna limit its y axis minimum and maximum value to 1 and negative one or negative one and one yeah negative one and one so now this one can move only one unit along y on that side and negative one unit on the other side as you can see I cannot move it any further only one unit Okay, so everything work, works perfectly I have now set it using the transformation constraint which is a very cool constraint as I was saying okay now I'm gonna delete these constraints in here and I'm gonna show you the 
copy rotation constraint. I cannot use the copy rotation constraint for this first gear because it doesn't copy the rotation of this object but its location. So I'm gonna use it from this uh, for these three gears only. Okay, add a constraint, copy rotation. The target will be the gear dot zero zero two, which is this gear. So I want to copy its rotation along Z. When this moves along Z, this will move along Z as well. Okay, everything is fine except that we need to invert it. So just press invert, as simple as that. And that's done. As you can see, this is a quicker constraint than the transformation constraint in here. So just use that if you can. Okay, now I'm gonna add it for this one gear.003, which is this one. And in here I need to use a trick because the this object is rotated, so the local axes are flipped 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna deselect it all so you can see where the local axes are oriented. As you can see, this we rotate along the Z axis. And when this rotates along the Z, I want this to rotate along the Z as well, but along the local Z, not the global Z. So I'm gonna use in here the owner local space. So the owner is the object with the constraint, meaning this one. This is the target world space, which is this one. So it will use the world space for the target, or this one, and it will use the local space for the owner, or this one. And the axis will be Z. Okay, let's check it. And it looks fine if we invert it. Okay, so as you can see, we have done that. And it now rotates correctly. And we only have this gear left, copy rotation, gear for this one. And this is the same thing as we did with this one, but uh, with a little bit of the difference. Meaning that we will use the local space for the owner or for this one. Uh, and yeah, Z. Okay, let's check it. And we don't have to check inverse, it most correctly. So it uses the local space of the target, which is this one. This is the target, so the local space. Uh, Z axis, it will rotate along the Z. Okay, and this will rotate along the world Z. This gear. Okay, so pretty much that's all. As you can see, this works very, very fine, uh, and yeah, it's a lot easier to animate this way. So to give you an idea about what you can do with the constraints, I have another layer in here, second layer, and I have some objects and I've used constraints but also modifiers. So you can combine the constraints with the modifier to create some really cool stuff. Okay, first. Uh, my computer is uh, too slow, as you can see, it's almost crashed in there, because I have too many vertices in here, so first I'm just gonna decimate this object. Okay, I'm gonna decimate it again, modify and decimate. Okay, point, maybe. 
I'm just making less vertices in there so it will move a little bit faster so you can see what we're doing okay so as you can see I have added some constraints and modified in here so that when I move this uh, rope or, or yeah I want it to look like rope that wheel will rotate as you can see and I've used both modifiers and constraints so I'm gonna show you how I made this first this object this rope I have created only this loop in here currently is decimated and it looks awful but I just made this one loop in here which is a half of a circle extruded that vertice up a little bit and use the screw tool in here screw to make this mesh only this uh, mesh and then I have added an array modifier with a 37 count so I have 27 37 sorry of that uh, mesh in there okay so another modifier I applied was curve modifier I have added a curve modifier to uh, make this curving point in here because the rope was just straight after I modeled it so I have added a Bezier curve uh, this line that you can see in here and I have just bend it around there and I've added the curve modifier to the rope and set it the object to be thread curve or the Bezier curve this is thread, the thread curve okay so that's how you do the rotation of the rope and this is uh, the modeling of this was pretty easy just a circle extruded and this doesn't have any modifier but it has a constraint okay so I've used the transformation constraint as you can see here now when I move the rope up along the z-axis this should rotate along the local z-axis or along the global y-axis okay so the target I set to thread which is the rope and it should copy the location to rotation as you can see I have used the local space to both the objects so when this rope moves up along the Z axis the this object this wheel will rotate along the local Z axis so they're both local and the local Z is this one the the local Z of the wheel is the global Y okay so I've also checked extrapolate to make that linear linear graph and I have added another constraint to the rope which is a limit location so the rope can only move up until here three units and down negative three units to something like that okay so this is another use of the constraints combined with the modifiers and you can have some really cool results and I extruded some faces in here so you can see that the rotation is correct as you could see that extruded face remains uh, on that bump of the rope so the rotation is the same it's three units in here with 300 degrees rotation okay so that's all for today thank you for watching I'm waiting to see what you learned from this tutorial and see you next time